Welcome back to the garage. Hope you all had a good 4th of July. Today, with any luck, I'll get tail lights and turn signals working. And if you guys wouldn't mind, if you like what I'm doing, leave me a like or a comment below and just let me know. It does cool, weird things with the algorithm and it helps the channel grow. Thank you. Actually, before we get into that, we need to update the list. A few things have changed. The ignition accidentally got done. Gas gauge works. Headlights and wiring done. Which brings us to today's shenanigans. Tail lights and maybe turn signals. Let's see how far we get. I cannot keep this workbench clean. Better. Now I kind of did want to reuse these tail lights. They've got that classic Jeep look to them. I think, you know, these have Ford logos on them. I'm pretty sure they were like CJ5 tails, but unfortunately these things were just not what I needed. Driver's side was okay. You know, it actually had both lights, though someone had cut off the turn signal side because I guess they didn't need them. Passenger side one, however, Lens was busted. This thing was actually full of wasps. It was a wasp nest and dirt daubers, but this thing didn't even have the socket. They left me the spring, but no socket. So turn signals, not really possible on the back. So we had to drill them out. There was no way these were coming loose in one piece. With the tail light removed, we see some history in the sheet metal. More of that green which is just really nice because that almost matches the trailer. So I guess we'll temporarily mount one right here and ignore the gaping holes. Driver's side is sort of the same state here. More of that nice green paint, but a hint of that CJ2A bluish green color, which was also found under the dash, so kind of interesting. The narrative was always that this thing was originally Luzon Red, but that's more evidence that maybe it was that factory blue-green. Anyways, I think this is the trailer plug cover. I have to go back and look at my CJ2A diagrams and such, but I'd like to put the tail light down here. Unfortunately, there's a ton of Bondo right there. And if we look at the sheet metal, there's a big hole there that's been patched and then bonded to hell. So once more, I get the feeling that we're just going to widen the hole or move it over just a little bit, put the new ones there temporarily, and just rock those for a while. Replacing those busted ones will be a set of these, factory style. I like to keep it clean and original. And those CJ5 or later style taillights just didn't feel right on that CJ2, so we'll go with these. I've just spent the past 20 minutes trying to get this out of the frame rail. It goes in and out and in and out and then over the cross member, then back into the frame rail, then out, then over this cross member and it's just, why? Why? Oh, thank heavens, it broke. I can't find my wire clippers right now. 
but that saves me another 20 minutes. And with this, the rest of the rear harness is gone. Jumping ahead a little bit. Turn signals are about to be installed. Still a lot of wiring to go. The tail light install went pretty well. But certainly next up will be the rat's nest that will be turn signals. Plus I also picked up one of these. This is one of those little idiot lights for alternators to let you know if it's not charging. And I'll get that little guy set up right there. And of course, because we're working on a vehicle that has been converted from a generator to an alternator, got the old eBay special kind of voltmeter. Get that installed too. My back hurts, but tail lights from the firewall down past the steering box. Take a turn by the dirt dauber nest. Thought I'd got all of them, but there's another one. <sighs> then we come to something I forgot about. So there's one brake line, nice, shiny, new, and there's the other one. There was a reason I didn't redo that one. I don't remember what it was. I don't agree with that decision now, so now I get to remake the line from the master cylinder to the cross member with the soft line at the rear. Great. Can't decide if I should put that in a loom or not. Seems like for the brake lights, you maybe should, but they sure weren't. I think this end is the reason why I decided not to do this. I mean, this looks great. It looks fine. Now, yeah, slightly painted. Looks fine until you get up there. My back hurts too much to get up, so I'm just rolling along. True story, though. On my desk at work, I do have a little placard that says, Some days. The best thing about my job is that my chair spins. It was kind of nice to have some family over for the 4th of July weekend. Went ahead and put the Bantam's cover on just to let all the wrinkles fall out of it, hopefully. Man, I can't wait to tow that thing with this Jeep. They just go together. Ah, oh, shoot, here we go again. I'm glad I'm replacing this. That's pretty dang cruddy on the inside. A lot of just pure mud in this line. And then the same is up at the end that goes to the cross member off to the soft line. So, uh, this is the right thing to do. I'm just so tired of brakes. But if I do it right from the start, I won't have to deal with it later. So, second attempt, new line. I made the rookie mistake of making the first one uh, without putting an end on there. I had to cut it, and then it was uh, just a little bit too short, so I had to remake the whole thing. Well, um, that's okay, I'll find that someday.
maybe someday I'll go driving, hit a good bump, and leave a cloud of dust in my wake. <coughs> and if I ever get around to getting that master cylinder in here, that should just about line up right one way or another. I hope. Okay, okay, I can already hear a couple of you reminding me that, hey, the parking brake doesn't work. Go tighten that bolt. Fine, I hear ya. All right, real talk. If anyone out there knows how to properly adjust one of these emergency brake cables, hit me up in the comments or link a video or something because I'm doing something wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I, I need to move that back down, but there's too much slack. You pull the handle and it only starts to engage at the very end of the handle and that's, that's no bueno. So if you know what you're doing here and you're smarter than me on an e-brake cable to make this sucker work, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Tail lights. Passenger side tail light is in. I even got this side loomed up with the loom I had. Across the back, dropping the light. <sighs> Driver side, I've just got that crimped up. I've run out of loom though. Proper colors for these should be orange and brown. I don't have enough orange and brown, but I've got purple and gray. Let me get these crimped in and then I'll technically have almost functional turn signals. You ever get the feeling you're being watched? Yep got a visitor today. He's not a lot of help. I had to hide my crimping tool because he wants to eat them. Well, hmm. I did all the wiring for the wiring diagrams on Kaiser Willie's website and based on just logically what should go. And this relay just didn't work. I mean, I, I hit the, uh, the lever and I heard click, 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 and then it released the magic smoke. So that's junk. And in its place, instead, I picked up a much heavier duty looking heavy duty flasher, just a 550 flasher, apparently, that's all these are. And I'll review some wiring and try that. Meanwhile, in standard garage on the hill fashion, this day is taking a sideways turn, not just in terms of releasing the magic smoke, but priorities. I think that hasn't even left the garage yet, but I'm putting a horn on it because it didn't have a horn. I guess I just want to hear that old beep beep, I'm a Jeep kind of horn on this thing, so distractions. Well, this is the horn Kaiser Willie sells. It's not marked which side is positive or negative. I don't realistically know if it matters. I'm gonna make an educated guess because stuff's printed left to right here that that's positive and negative. out of the way and it's wow that's loud wow yeah that's a that's a tad louder than I expected that is not the uh, the lower me me I was expecting but I suppose this is a 12 volt and not a 6 volt Totally unnecessary, but still done. All 
All right. Here we go with a test of the new flash relay. Well, I think I've done something wrong. Tail lights are on, and you can almost imperceptibly see that this one's just barely pulsing slightly brighter. Well, given the brightness on that, that pretty much confirms I've got the, uh, the two filaments wired backwards. Great. Okay, so hopefully this will help someone somewhere along the way. If you get this turn signal at this guy from Kaiser Willis, you get these sets of uh, instructions in PDF format. And it says right here with a, a three pin flasher, line in, ground blue, load out. I think this is a lie because uh, this guy just popped immediately in this configuration. But when I hooked up its replacement over there, which was just, you know, one of these, an EL13 heavy duty 550 flasher replacement from AutoZone for 12 bucks. If you don't put a ground on it and leave it as if it's like a two pin, works great, doesn't explode. So with the replacement fuse on there, with the ignition on. Yep. That's what we like to see. But the instant you put that blue ground wire on that third pin, pop goes the bus fuse. So learn from that, maybe. All right, so red is black, black is red. All is right in the wiring world. All right, that looks much better. I'm a little bit lukewarm on this choice. The holes were both already there in the front bumper, which is obviously custom. Normally you'd put one of those on the fender for your turn signals, but they were there. And I kind of don't want to drill a hole in the fender if I don't have to. Those might be too low for turn signals. I guess we'll find out. I've done myself a favor and added one of those idiot lights to let me know that maybe I left the accessory system on or something. Never know when it'll come in handy. All right, with that, the turn signal wiring is pretty much done. This is probably not its final configuration though. Those fender mounted turn signals would have been a better idea. I'm, I'm really lukewarm on the bumper right now. And the back ones of course work too. But I think that's it for this one. Uh, if you like what I'm doing or at least find it entertaining, do me a favor and leave a like on the video and a comment below. That really does help the channel grow. It, the algorithm sees those and it starts showing the videos to more people. Whether they click on it or not is up to them, of course, but it just helps the channel grow. So I'd appreciate any likes and comments you're willing to give. But that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one.